Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about TIG torches and different setups that would be a good fit for different situations, including one that works pretty well across the board if you just wanna leave the same setup on for steel, aluminum, stainless, uh, those sorts of things. Now, before we dive into the consumables, I just wanted to point out that there are different sizes and styles of TIG torches, so you need to make sure and get the consumables that work for what you have. Basically, the smaller torches like this right here, this is a water-cooled, if you notice it has three lines coming out of it. Um, this is a 20 series or the air cooled version is a nine that uses a different size consumable than either of these big ones. These ones use the same consumables, um, except there is one exception if you have a CK Worldwide brand torch. Now on the front of the torch, you have this little uh, heat shield insulator and there are different kinds uh, for the different kinds of cups. But on a CK torch, um, if you take this off, it has this brass that goes clear underneath it where on most other torches um, it's the molded silicone or rubber uh, that's there and so if you get a consumable kit online often the little insulators here uh, won't fit very well on ck torches so you need to get the special one um, specifically for a CK torch, if that's what you have. This is a basic TIG torch setup here, and there are really two purposes. One is to uh, hold the tungsten in place, and two is to deliver the gas down to your workpiece, just in the areas where you want it. As you're watching this, uh, let me know down in the comments what you like to set up your torch with, and what you find works and why, so that we can all kind of learn uh, together here. So first you have this little heat shield insulator that fits on there. And that's pretty important because it seals the gas around your cup. And then right into the front of that, uh, you install your collet body. And there are two different types of collet bodies. Um, this right here is a standard collet body. And notice those holes around the outside for the gas to come out. This is a gas lens right here. And it has this diffuser and that will flow the gas uh, much more smoothly then this one will. So we'll talk about the difference between uh, these and when you might wanna use them in a minute. Also, notice the difference in length between these. Um, I like the stubby short consumables. So these stubby type consumables will install into your larger uh, torches like a 17 or 26, but they let you use the cups for the smaller torches. Right now I'll just install a standard collet body. The collet uh, will go in next and that's what holds your tungsten in place. Now there are also different types of collets. This is the most common. This is a split collet. Notice that it has that split in it. This one's a little bit twisted. That's the downside with them is they, they don't always hold up, especially with high heat, um, but they do center the tungsten really well. This right here is a wedge collet. It has no split in it, um, and notice it's ground at uh, an angle right there to jam the electrode into the side of the collet body, and these hold up for a really long time. So I usually pick a wedge collet just because I like the longevity of them, and they hold up better over high heat, but either one will work. Go ahead and install that wedge collet right there, and then the back cap. Now this back cap presses that collet up into the collet body to hold it in place, you need to make sure it has that O-ring and that the O-ring engages uh, here um, to be able to seal that. So I'll just install it loosely right now until I insert a tungsten. And then once my electrode's installed, I can tighten that down against it and that'll hold it in place. Now notice that I'm using a shorter back cap so I have to cut my tungsten electrode in half. You can use a long back cap to use a full length electrode, but I find that gets in the way and this is a pretty good uh, happy medium. Now on the front end, uh, I'll install my gas cup right here. Um, there are different sizes of these that'll control how much area uh, gets covered with gas flow. We'll talk about that in a minute. I like to use 332 uh, diameter tungsten for everything. If I was welding a lot of heavier aluminum, I might use like 8th inch for everything, um, but I, I don't need that amperage uh, capability very often, so 332 works pretty well. I grind it to a point on both ends largely because that helps me to insert it easier. Um, if it gets all messed up, you wouldn't want to shove that down in the end. You'd want to dress that end, but either way, just sharpen to a point. And I use multi-blend tungstens. I actually bought three different brands to compare them and they all work 
pretty much just as well. 2% lanthanated is another good option. I'll, I'll link a video in the description where I compared a bunch of different types of tungsten electrodes. This is my favorite setup for aluminum, a number five cup with a standard collet body. And a lot of the best aluminum TIG welders uh, that I know of use this same setup. Now, if a gas lens makes the gas flow more smoothly, why wouldn't you want to use that all the time? Well, um, for DC welding on steel, stainless steel, titanium, all those sorts of things, I would say gas lens is the way to go. But you'll find great TIG welders are quite divided on the topic of a gas lens for aluminum. In fact, most of the really good aluminum TIG welders I've talked to and uh, you know discussed this with prefer a standard collet body. And there are a few who like a gas lens, but they all make great welds, so obviously you can use either one. Now the reason that I prefer a standard collet body over a gas lens for aluminum is simple. It's because I don't want to clean out the gas lens. This is a gas lens that I've used for some aluminum. Uh, and if you look at that, um, notice the aluminum deposits on that screen. And over time, that starts to interrupt the gas flow and it'll start doing funny things and your arc will wander around and things. You can still get some more use out of this after it gets kind of plugged up. If you take a pick, you can pull off a layer. But once you pull that off, you can get another bit of life out of it. So nothing wrong with using a gas lens. Um, but I don't see a lot of advantage on aluminum, so I use a standard collet body. And the reason for the small cup is by controlling where the argon flows to a small area, it etches less material off around the uh, aluminum weld puddle on AC. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but you don't really need a large shielding area with aluminum. All right, so I'm running the Invertig 251 today, and for aluminum, we'll set it to AC. I'm going to run a frequency of, we'll call it 90 hertz, good middle of the road, and balance. I'll set that at 75% electrode negative. Be good to go. So as I start the arc here, notice before the metal melts, um, you'll see the oxide layer on the surface etch off. And that's why you're running AC is to be able to etch that off with the electrode positive side of the cycle. And it'll etch just in front of your actual weld pool. And this is what allows you to get a nice clean weld. Notice how I get that uh, fairly narrow band because I'm using this smaller cup around here. And I got a nice clean weld there with a standard collet body. Now let's compare that with a gas lens here. And as I'm running, it's almost uh, impossible to tell the difference. You can see that first bead right behind this one. Um, but basically it's etching out just the same. It's shielding adequately with both different types of consumables. So there's not a huge difference there uh, from my opinion. All right, so this one was with the standard collet body. This is with a gas lens. Really hard to tell a whole lot of difference between the two. They could use another dab on both of them in the craters, but uh, you know, both work. For that reason, I go with the standard collet body because it doesn't get gummed up with uh, debris. I have some 1 8 inch stainless steel here and I've switched over to a gas lens. So for DC welding on steel, stainless steel, titanium, those sorts of things, I pretty much always use a gas lens and on the larger style torches, I use a stubby style gas lens that will use these same uh, cups like we talked about earlier. Now I'm going to show you here um, using a small number five cup like we used on aluminum, how that affects the oxidation on here. I'll keep the same amperage and do my best to maintain a consistent travel speed. And then we'll try it with the larger number 12 cup and a longer uh, electrode extension and see the difference there. So if you look, it shielded just fine during the weld. Um, you can see some oxidation after the fact. It's not terrible, but uh, you do have some oxidation except for this area right there where the gas shielded, and that's the key. So now let's try that with a larger cup that's gonna shield more of the area while it cools, running the same amperage and as close as I can to the same travel speed. So see the difference how much more of the weld here is bright and shiny with the larger cup. Um, even after where I was holding the post flow, it had more time to cool 
while gas was over it. So that's why I really like these larger cups uh, compared to smaller ones on stainless steel. Not that you can't use this and you'll save some gas with it, um, but this does give you just a really uh, nice clean result uh, using those. So I'll use like a number 10 or a number 12 whenever I'm welding stainless steel on a gas lens. What if you could have just one setup on your torch to use for whatever, if you just do little jobs here and there and you don't necessarily need the ideal, um, you just want something that works across the board. Let me show you what I use for that. A good middle of the road is like a number seven or a number eight cup. It gives pretty good gas coverage for things like stainless steel, definitely for steel. Lets you extend your electrode a little bit, not as far as those ones with the secondary diffuser and stuff, but um, enough to be able to see and get in places. And it doesn't etch too wide on aluminum. Let me show you here with a number eight cup. Now notice in this case, um, as I start my weld, the etching area is just much larger than it was before. And that's because the gas is able to cover a larger area with that larger cup. So one, I'm flowing more gas and I'm etching more than I need to. So this isn't ideal for aluminum, but it sure works just fine. If you wanted to have one setup that's a good middle of the road, um, you definitely get a clean bead. So if you look, once again, it's a nice clean bead. I uh, could use another dab in the crater, but uh, the big thing I want to point out is this wider etching band. And it's not really problematic unless the appearance bothers you. Now let's also look at it here on DC. I've got the machine set just the same as these two runs. Remember this was with a number five cup. This is a number 12. Now we'll just run a regular pink uh, number eight cup and keep it the same amperage and as consistent as I can on the travel speed. So as you'd expect, it's somewhere in between that 12 cup, which I'd say is kind of an ideal uh, for stainless like this, and the number five cup, which is a little small. By the way, when you're working with stainless steel, look how much this warped and distorted just from running those three beads. I mean, it's almost like a Pringle there. So uh, those are some of the joys of working with stainless steel and probably a good topic for another video. Let's look at this outside corner joint on some thin stainless steel. I'm running without filler, so it's an autogenous weld and you can see that oxide following after. Now I'm running a double pulse feature here with a high and low frequency pulse together so I can pace my progression the same in this and I'll follow it on with a larger cup to see the difference. Now here I am moved to a large number 15 cup and you can really see that line where the shielding ends after the weld. And so by using a large cup, you get a longer uh, period of time for that weld to cool before it's exposed to the air. That's all that's going on here. And so that's why you'll see much less uh, severe oxidation here with that larger cup because it was shielded for a little bit longer. So if we look right here at the heat tint um, that we got from the number eight cup, we did get some oxidation because I was moving quickly and moving fast like that is a good way to keep the overall heat input down and reduce distortion. Um, but it doesn't give as much time for the heat to dissipate. Now here I was working just about as quickly, but you can see a significant difference, much less oxidation when I was using that larger number 15 cup. And here, honestly, I might want to dial back the amperage a little and slow down to give that heat some time to dissipate. So I get more of that straw color all the way along rather than some of these blues but it's really not, uh, not terrible oxidation on this. But just to summarize, for aluminum, a number five cup with a standard collet body I think is ideal, but a small cup like a five with a gas lens will work fine. Now for DC welding on stainless steel, a gas lens with a larger cup like a 12 or a 15 is really nice, or uh, on steel, you know, a cup somewhere around an eight to a 10 is pretty good. Now, if you want one cup that'll work for everything, a gas lens with a number eight should be pretty good across the board. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leaving me a comment. And if you are just learning how to weld, uh, check out my affordable online courses linked in the description. I have a full money back guarantee. I keep them as affordable as possible. And I promise they're gonna help you learn a lot faster than just watching videos because I get you out there with focused practice exercises so you can practice with intention moving from one step to the next and not get overwhelmed. We'll see you next time.